It is the Flow Friday Night Sports Show, and it's time for us now to have a look at uh, weekend's results and what's going on in Mallee Netball. Joining me on the line, Nicole McMahon is back. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? Going all right, yes. Uh, good. Uh, not quite your weekend, I, I, I suppose, last weekend against Karina, but boy, you gave them a run for their money, 45-38. Oh, absolutely, like seven goals, and that is a huge improvement um, when they first met in week one, which was, I think, 34 goal margin. Um, and it was a really uh, interesting game to watch. It was very consistent from both sides. I think Karuna won the first quarter, Lamry won the second, Karuna won the third, and Lamry won the fourth. Um, so neither players, uh, neither team, sorry, could quite get a really good flow on, or they would for kind of a quarter, and then, then they'd lose it the next quarter. Um, Karuna did end up having a few of their mid-quarters out. Coach Shailen Pate said, you know, not all fit and healthy, and I think she thinks herself. So they were uh, short a few mid-quarters. And then I had a few other players carrying injuries and sickness but having to take the court anyway. So, yeah, they certainly didn't have their normal consistent four quarters. Um, Kiara Paik and Renee Rudy and Sir Karina, they worked that ball down strongly um, when they did find that flow. Um, I did, you know, watching the game, although I, you know, try and leave it up to the coaches to select the team of the week, but it did make it quite a uh, Fun <laughs> because every quarter was was so different. One player would have a you know rip the first quarter, and then the second quarter would be would be not existent. But no, um, so all, all players I did have did have um, you know a reasonable match. I shouldn't say that. But uh, Bailey vote really finding some form um, in wing defence for Lamaru. Um, she got some great turnovers in wing defence. Abby Maynard as well shot really well for Lamaru for a majority of the game. So. Um, so, you know, definitely something to be proud of, Lamarie. Seven goals, you know, that's, that's quite the turnaround. So we'll see what um, this round brings for Lamarie. Absolutely. Uh, all right, we move uh, to Murrayville now where uh, Peak bounced back. They had a good solid win over Murrayville here, uh, 55 to 37. So 18 goals to the good. Uh, they needed that, that win too, Pete, because there's a couple of teams coming from uh, – uh, beyond them, uh, behind them on the ladder that might just be getting themselves together in the second half of the season. Yeah, that's it. I think we're kind of wondering, you know, where are Pete going to be? Are they going to be in that, you know, top two or are they going to edge themselves out of the top four? But um, now showing that they do probably have the capability to be up, up near the top two, um, a really good effort for them. Um, Coach Bianca Wade, sorry, Bianca, I keep saying Bianca Carl, but she is now married, but her she's registered still for the netballers Carl. So Bianca Wade, this is. Um, but yeah, very happy with her team's uh, form, finding you know uh, playing a solid four quarters. Um, Bianca and her sister Alana Carl were dealing well in their goal ring, um, and you know just just finding some good consistency with Kiara Rundle and Robin Lehman um, holding um, up really strongly in their mid court, and Maddie Farley and um, Adelia Stevenson in their defence. So yeah, peak having a near full side, a bit of a quiet game from Marvel. Um, Alea Heinze again finding some good. Form, but yeah, very solid win from Peak. Yes, indeed. Uh, their fourth win of the season, and important too, because we're getting towards round seven now. I reckon this year, with the way things are looking, you're going to need at least six wins to be safe in the top four. So um, there's a couple of teams that are, well, one in particular that's outside the top four at the moment that I reckon are coming. So, um, and let's talk about them now. Uh, Pinero took them on, BDT. And yeah. uh, they nearly got there, BDT. Oh, they did. 54-48. Yeah, wow. Yeah, BDT aren't ones to sit outside that top four very often. Um, I don't know if there's been a year that they probably haven't made the top four. And six goals, you know, that is not very many. That's not a huge margin. Um, interestingly, Borders did win the first, you know, week one against Pinaroo, but I think it was a little bit of luck involved. Pinaroo just, you know, a very new side um, and struggled that week one. Um, but no, Pinner will be very happy to walk away with that for those two points. Um, and BDT still were quite a depleted side. Um, they did welcome back Embry Joe, um, who had the full first round out. Um, but yeah, Pinner really hungry for this win. Um, you know, and Pinner, I think they're second on the ladder now and borders a bottom or second to bottom. So it just shows, you know, yeah, you said it might take six wins to make the top four. It might even take less than that because, there's, yeah, I think it's going to come down to percentage as much as anything. But there were some great matchups um, on Saturday. Tash Benning up against Ed Richo, Zara Kerr and Denny Burling and Lucy Dowd and Steph Heineke um, 
you know, you couldn't have probably matched up that game better. So not surprised it was such a close margin, but well done to Penry. Absolutely. So uh, that's the end of round six. We're going to be into round seven. Uh, before we get to that, though, team of the week, uh, how was it? Who was it? And uh, who's in it? This is one of the uh, hardest weeks to put together. I think each every week, you know, I get coaches to kind of send in their nominations, and then I might also ask someone else that's watched the game because coaches might just give me completely different players. <laughs> they might mention, "Oh, this player absolutely smashed this player," and meanwhile, the other coaches put that other player in there <laughs> in their top two. So it's a bit like us. Oh, so I might have to kind of phone a friend. Um, so a huge amount of nominations um, this week, but we somehow sorted through it. Um, and we came up with the goalies were Bianca Waite, not Carl, from Beak, uh, Renee Rudiger from Karunda, Lucy Dow from BDP. For the centre court, we had Kiara Pate uh, from Karunda, Bailey Vogt from Lamaroo, Alea Hypsey from Marvel, and Zara Keogh from Pinaroo. And in the defence lineup, we had Chloe Latter from Marvel, Maddie Farley from Peak, and Steph Heinegge from Pinaroo. And substitutes were Abby Maynard and Denny Schilling. There you go. Uh- Coach of the week, just looking at that, uh, this is normally my job. I'm going to go with the peak coach. Uh, an 18 goal win over Murrayville. Yeah. Uh, probably, yeah, probably their, their week, I reckon. Yeah, no, I'll back that up. Sounds good. All right. Uh, let's move to round seven of matches and have a look at who's playing who. And I tell you what, we got so, well, every week there's big matches. I don't even know why I bother <laughs> saying that anymore. But, um, you know, let's have a look at some of these matchups. I mean, look at this one at peak. Uh, they welcome Karunda to town and. Uh, I reckon uh, it's just about there, just about cherry ripe to win this one, Peak. You know what? I reckon you might be right. Um, I reckon it's time for Karinda to um, to maybe. It's not, not a bad thing to have a loss, and I think it will keep them focused. <laughs> and it might just throw a spanner in the work um, for this for this year. Karinda are back to a full side, hopefully. <laughs> um, it's uh, you know even hard to call it just the night before before the game with mm. you know the way things are. Uh, in the current climate, but after a bit of a shaky win, Karinda will want to redeem themselves. But Peak are playing some really good netball and seem to be improving week on week and know how to finish off those close games as well. Um, I believe they've got a consistent side as well, except for Georgie Ballard, who's off to represent Australia in the under-19 softball in Canada. Wow. Which is pretty cool. So I um, yeah, can't believe she's missing out on a smelling netball game to go play softball in Canada, but anyway, we'll let her go. <laughs> so she's, uh, she's out for the next month doing that, so yeah, best of luck to her. Um, yeah. So this is, you know, bound to be a great game. Karinda and Peak are kind of arch rivals. Um, so yeah, let's pick, let's pick Peak for a bit of um, excitement this weekend. All right. Uh, speaking of arch rivals, uh, it's the Battle of the Roos. Lamaru taking on Pinaru at Lamaru. Uh, the Hawks are up and about, and uh, well, it was a tight one for the Subarus last week, but uh, why are your girls going to win? Why are they going to win? You think I'm going to pick them, do you? Of course. <laughs> <Am I that? laughs> well, yeah, I, I shouldn't think that and not pick them. I always do because I do have a lot of faith in the Lamaroo side and they do have a full lineup. Um, and it's slightly different from the last time they played Pinaroo in that they have Alicia Nagel back in goalkeeper and she's been really solid um, and capable back there. So I think, uh, you know, Lamaru, after their loss in week two to Pinaru, I think should come back well from that. Um, Alicia has been uh, gelling really well with Emily Tonkin, who's a new pickup for Lamaru. And I think that'll be a really good matchup against uh, Pinaru's Lara, Moody, and Sophie Sharad, who are in the goals for them. Pinaru are missing Tash Venning and Steph Heineke. Um, so that is a bit of a depleted defense lineup for them. Um, I think that means Abby Keary will, will slot back into their goal defence, um, which I think, you know, she is playing leg and leg reserves. I think is a wing attack, but she, you know, is very uh, clever uh, player. I think her brother's played his 150th for the, um, the West Adelaide, so that kind of shows the calibre of her genes. Um, but she'll definitely keep the Lamaru goalie, Abby and Katrina, on their toes, who has started to gel really nicely. Um, but they certainly won't get away with much um, with Abby there picking off balls. So oh, I think whichever side gets out first and settles, we take home the two points. Um, it is going to be close, but, yeah, I guess I better, better pick Lamaroo, hey? Well, you'd be uh, – that. yeah, they might not let you back out there if you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, look, um, we've got to talk about the last match of the round as well because uh, as ridiculous as this is going to sound – if other results go their way, <clears throat> the one we just talked about, 
BDT or Maraville, whoever wins this game, could be in the four by the end of the round, which is ridiculous. Um, who would have thought it? But that's the situation we find ourselves in. At Canalpin, BDT hosting Maraville, who wins? Well, yeah, this is a very important win for both sides if they want a chance at that top four. And Maraville won um, in week three, so... BDT will by all means be wanting to redeem themselves and they excitingly for the first time I think have a near full side um, so I'm really excited to see what that lineup can do. Um, I think they're going to be really pumped up to take home this win um, versus Marvel. Marvel will still be very competitive. Um, they've now got Kiana who's moved overseas uh, so they've lost her for the season but they've locked in Stacey Merza Bruins um, which is really exciting for their side. She's just got such, you know, a strong netball head and presence on that court, and she'll be a really good leader for the younger, some of the youngest players, um, including they've got Crystal Moore, who's uh, coming up from Marvel, who's been playing some great mid court in the Bs. Um, so I think I think BDT will be too strong on Saturday. I've heard we even may have some other blasts in the past, including Jackie Vandelier on the bench. Um, so I'm hoping they uh, Mel chucks her on for a run. Uh, so I think this this day, uh, sorry, I think this will go to BDT on the weekend. Um, but yeah, excited to see this result because I think it will almost um, impact that final top four that we see at the end of the year. Absolutely, yeah, baby, the uh, sleeping giant might be awakening. So uh, with plenty of time left in the season too. <laughs> yeah, that's it. There's just no, um, you really can't afford to lose any games this year. Like I think you'll be kicking yourself if you lost, you know. I get, you know, There's always one that you should have won and sometimes you can get away with it. But I think this year it's just not going to be the case. It's going to be way too close. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else to report before we wrap it up? No, all good. Thanks, Jason. Have a great weekend. You too. Uh, look forward to catching up with you again soon. Um, enjoy the weekend and good luck to your Lamaroo girls.